So a lot of my videos has been talking about how you can get your first programming job uh, by switching careers or by self-study. But let's say you already made that step and landed your first job. And now you're working as an entry level uh, engineer, uh, either by career switching or maybe you're just a new grad. Um, now what? In this video, I just wanted to share a few tips and tricks that I learned along the way and as a manager. So let's get started. So first off, why am I qualified to talk about this? Well, I've been a manager for quite some time and I've seen a lot of um, junior engineers, uh, some more successful than others, uh, but have probably worked with, you know, 50 plus of them, hired several, many of them as well, right? And I feel at this point I can distinguish between um, engineers that I know are going to be more successful than others. And I'm going to just to try to share a few of these nuggets. In this video, I'm really defining entry level engineer as somebody that has, you know, maybe less than two years of experience uh, in the industry itself. Um, in some work uh, forces, you might call them an L1 engineer. Uh, some would refer to them as an L3 uh, in traditional FANG. Uh, so that's who I'm talking about. So for entry level engineers, the key thing we evaluate uh, you guys on is basically, are you guys a net positive? Do you contribute more to the team than you take away? You might be surprised to hear that because you might be thinking, well, why do you hire somebody um, that actually takes more resources uh, than they put out? Uh, but I think the truth of the matter is most junior level engineers, uh, most uh, people out of college are an investment. Um, they ask a lot of questions. They break production. They don't push super frequently. Um, it takes quite some time to actually build them up to where uh, they're, they're productive, believe it or not. So the most important thing as an entry level engineer is I think one, to accept that uh, you're just not going to be a net positive for some time. And then two, uh, try to get to net productivity uh, as fast as possible. So the biggest difference between uh, an entry level engineer that I feel will excel in their career versus one that might not make it is the type of questions that uh, they ask, right? So one counterintuitive thing is that many entry level engineers feel like they are so much of a burden that they don't ask questions. And this is actually the worst case scenario. And these are the entry level engineers that actually might, um, you know, get fired, to be honest. Um, because it happens all too often where you don't hear from an engineer for about a, a week or so. They're, they're not talking, they're not asking anything, so you don't know how things are going. And then a manager reaches out and checks in on them and asks, like, okay, so, you know, how's it going? More often than not, it's not that they were like working away and have something, you know, magical built up or anything, uh, but more often than not, they've probably went down a completely wrong path or just haven't made any progress at all and were too shy and too embarrassed uh, to ask, right? Maybe they were completely blocked on something. Uh, those are the engineers that will not progress because they don't have this mindset of growth. If you are so shy and embarrassed to ask questions, well, you have to change that. We have to figure out how to change that immediately or you're not gonna make it because for the basically rest of your entire career, you're going to have to get extremely used to uh, receiving constructive feedback uh, learning, um, taking advice from people that are more senior uh, than you. And if you don't have even the, the basic requisite of asking questions uh, when you need help, um, that is somebody that no one can work with, right? To be frank. Sorry to be harsh, but that's just the truth. If there's one thing uh, that you take away from this video is um, if you're at a job, ask questions. So what are the right questions here? Uh, the right questions are generally questions that are very slightly above your skill level or above your skill level, or uh, questions that are specific um, to maybe this company um, where the knowledge is not easily look upable. Those are generally questions that I 
find very useful to get asked, right? So for example, you might be assigned like a small task. A great question to ask uh, your manager or your team lead is something like, hey, I have an idea of how to implement this. What do you think about this, right? So for example, I'm thinking about creating a queue for this. Do you think a queue would be appropriate, right? So you're not asking like, oh, how do I do this? Um, you're presenting a solution and then you're asking, hey, is this solution, um, you know, correct? Is it, is it workable in this situation? Other uh, good questions is, let's say you run into like a build error. You run into something weird. You see something really bizarre in the code and you're, you're not sure what it does. Um, a lot of code at large companies can be weird because there's a lot of legacy, there's a lot of cruft, um, there are things that are not documented. If you run into that and you're confused, uh, ask about that because again, like the worst case scenario is you get blocked at, or on some weird build error um, that you know uh, was never written down how to resolve and then you get stuck. Uh, ask those questions generally. I know I make a distinction between what is a good question and what is the wrong question. But um, honestly, at the end of the day, don't super worry about it that much. Uh, even if you ask a question that is like really easily look upable and something that you should know, try just not to ask it twice, right? So for example, if you're asking what is an array, right? I think that's fine. Uh, someone will explain to you, but just don't go back and ask like what is an array like two or three times. <laughs> that, that would not be good, right? If, if you can look it up, like look it up first before asking and generally try to come to your 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 team lead or your your mentor with kind of more holistic problems uh, rather than just like one off like yes or no or like something that could be easily solved by just uh, them Googling it and sharing you a link. As a junior engineer, one of the hardest things to kind of wrap your mind around is knowing how frequently to ask questions because you're, you're, you're probably gonna feel imposter syndrome, right? You're gonna feel like, wow, they made a mistake hiring me. I'm such an idiot. I'm seeing all this code and I don't know what it does and I'm too afraid to ask because I feel like I'm gonna be a burden to your team. Again, you are a burden to your team. Every junior engineer that is hired is a burden to their team. That's why you're a junior engineer, right? Uh, your goal though is to become not a burden to your team as fast as possible and here are some other tips. On your team generally are people that are going to be more willing to help than others and you'll, you'll be able to suss that out pretty quickly. Generally at a good company, a large enough company, uh, people might um, assign you an explicit mentor, right? That mentor is there because they like helping people. They want you to succeed. And it looks good for them if you succeed, as in their um, performance review is probably going to be tied directly to how well you succeed. So they have every incentive for you to excel. Um, other people, um, if you don't have like a mentor assigned to you, are, are team leads, right? Team leads have to field questions all the time, so they're not really going to care. Uh, or your manager. Um, and if you don't have one, like ask your manager, like, hey, who's the best person to ask questions uh, on, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then once you have this person, a great thing to ask them is like, hey, I know I'm gonna have a lot of questions. What's the best way for me to approach you with questions, right? For example, do you prefer Slack or do you prefer email? Uh, if this is not remote, do you prefer me to just come with you physically for questions? Do you prefer I roll up a bunch of my questions and then I can ask you like five questions all at once? Like what works best for you? Your, your mentor or, or your senior uh, is going to really appreciate this actually and that's just gonna make um, a lot of the anxiety I think go away uh, once there's something codified and agreed upon. Uh, so you feel less bad uh, to ask your questions. Another pro tip to improve as quickly as possible is to ask for feedback. At large companies, you might generally be doing you know, performance review or peer feedback every six months, uh, sometimes every year. If you're at a small company, you might not be doing peer feedback ever. And that's 
actually makes it <laughs> incredibly difficult to help improve engineers. But you know, sometimes small companies just don't have this, this process. But even if a company has a review process every six months or so, I personally don't think that that's enough for a junior level engineer. What I would recommend to you is, especially if there is no formal uh, feedback cycle, to ask your manager if you can check in every quarter or so, so every three months, and just put that as something reoccurring on their calendar and be like, hey, every three months, can we just talk about like my performance? Um, and you just wanna keep it like really, um, really casual, right? Essentially what you wanna find out out of that meeting is, one, do they think you're progressing? Two, do they feel like you're becoming less and less of a burden to the team, right? So the point where you become not a junior engineer anymore and just like an engineer is, is basically when you are net positive to the team uh, plus one year or so, right? So take that point where you begin to become net positive, you operate under those conditions for about a year or so, then after that point, that's, that's usually where I see junior engineers being promoted uh, for the first time, right? So it, it's different for different companies, uh, but I'd say at, at FANG companies where there are like leveling bands and whatnot, for the sake of simplicity, let's call junior engineers L1, right? Uh, generally, they'll get promoted to L2 somewhere around like a year and a half to two years. Um, the fastest is maybe like a year, I've seen it. Um, but yeah, just take to that point where you start contributing uh, at about a year. Uh, that's generally what you're trying to target. And this is my most important uh, pro tip. I've saved it at the end. Um, but I think actually the most important thing you could be doing as a junior engineer is actually doing code reviews. Basically, as soon as you feel comfortable, you should be doing code reviews for members on your team uh, because that's gonna be the fastest way you're going to uh, learn to be a better programmer within the confines of your team. The reason why code reviews are so important is that it forces you to look and analyze good code, right? So you only get better coding if you know what good code looks like. If you don't know what good code looks like, then how can you improve, right? You have no standard for it. And, you know, doing code reviews can be a little bit intimidating because probably what's in your head is like, hey, I suck. Like, I have no authority to give the stamp of approval on anything, which is probably true. So if your company, for example, has a policy where you need one green stamp uh, or something where, um, in order for it to go to production, maybe you can talk to your manager and be like, hey, like, I want to start doing code reviews uh, to help me get better at coding. I want to, um, you know, approve pull, uh, pull requests, but maybe uh, on this team, if somebody sees it coming from me, they get it from somebody else to double check it, right? Uh, I think your team would be appreciative of that because again, one, it's going to show your team that you want to help out. You want to be a team player. You want to contribute, right? And then two, I, I guarantee you, you look at good code, you're going to write better code. And what doing code reviews forces you, you to do is to read things line by line and like understand what each component does. It helps you learn the code base a lot better too. The thing with a lot of companies is it's, it's like any language. Um, whenever you have a community of people, there's like certain uh, slang and like inside jokes and lingo, whatever, uh, that gets developed. But some of these inside jokes are informal, right? So it's not always written down. Um, because it happens too fast. And similarly, uh, at uh, large companies or, or companies in general, over time with just the engineers that are on there, there's going to be a certain style um, that gets uh, written. For example, maybe a team really prefers composition over inheritance, right? Or for some reason just really hates switch statements. Uh, maybe they prefer um, the style of uh, early returns and stuff like that. Just things uh, here and there um, that might not be written down um, in any formal style guide, uh, but is, you know, colloquial uh, coding at that company. And the only way for you to pick up on that is to really analyze the code. And the, the sooner you pick up on that, the sooner you can 
sort of speak uh, the dialect, uh, one can say, at that company. And the sooner, again, you can be productive. And, you know, once you're net positive, once you're net productive as a junior engineer, um, that's how you level. So anyways, those are my tips to you. Um, to summarize, I think the most important thing, by far, ask questions. Two, figure out how to contribute as soon as possible. And that contribution, although mostly comes from code, you can contribute and show your team that you are a team player in other ways, like with code reviews and PRs and whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, try to get into this mindset that uh, you're gonna grow, that you have a lot of places to grow, um, that you belong on the team, that you're actually uh, a smart individual, get rid of that imposter syndrome and just like ask questions. And hope this was uh, helpful to y'all and I'll see you guys next time.